Evening. Book of Matthew is where I desire you to be finding this evening. Be a little easier on you this evening and won't do near as much running as we did this morning. But to be fair, I was about the only one turning pages this morning. I didn't really give you guys the heads up as to where we was going, so... Um, Tonight we'll get more into uh, what I thought I had originally had planned for this morning, and it will, guess, maybe be more of preaching the calendar, at least to the date uh, that it is, and be aware of what this Sunday is. Yes? Is Palm Sunday? Very good, very good. Very good. I was trying to give you some subtleties there. Um, that's kind of what we're going to be looking at um, here tonight, uh, or those things, and uh, just a little bit that comes there with it, and uh, I may expand more upon it uh, as we get into next week. Uh, we'll just have to see how God leads in that. Um, but you know, let's get into reading this, and I, I guess we share my, my heart and my thoughts with you thereafter. Um, Matthew chapter number 21. That's where I'd like for us, like us uh, to begin. And um, just kind of want to uh, give you one thing here before we dive in. Um, if you read into the book of John and the events that had been going um, in John's writings, um, if we were to put this on a timeline, um, Jesus is kind of fresh out of his visit with Mary and Martha and the miracle of Lazarus. So there's still, uh, the, the, the time frame there is uh, fairly close, um, at least for word of mouth to be spreading and to be uh, generating lots of uh, anticipation. Um, so I, I want you to be mindful of, of, of that while we read this. And... Um, uh, I'm going to be in Matthew chapter 21, a few verses here, and I'm actually going to start in verse number 8. Matthew chapter 21, begin reading in verse number 8, and it says, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. All the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you again here tonight, uh, God, we're thankful, Father, for another opportunity to be back in your house. Father, another opportunity, Lord, to have your word, uh, God, open not only to our eyes, but into our hearts here tonight. Father, we just ask you, Lord, that as we sit here, as we read, as we, uh, Father, listen to you, speak to us, Father, through that word, Lord, that uh, uh, you would uh, open our hearts unto it. Father, help us to receive it, Lord, allow our uh, minds, Father, to uh, uh, not focus on things of the outside, but just focus upon you and your word here tonight, Lord, to be able to receive uh, in its entirety, Lord, what it is that you have for us. Father, we just ask you, Lord, that uh, uh, as we speak tonight, Lord, that it wouldn't be the things, God, that I desire to talk about or the things to be said, but God, it would be uh, you just uh, use me as a tool, Father, to uh, uh, put the words in my mouth, Lord, that you desire to be spoken and uh, uh, that you desire your people to hear. Father, we just uh, uh, ask, Lord, that uh, uh, you would help each and every one of us, Lord, just to be obedient, Father, unto those things, Father, to hear them, to accept them, to receive, Father, to uh, listen to every detail, Father, 
Father, what it is that you have for us here tonight, Lord, not just to get to hung up upon the big things, the things that we think we know, or uh, uh, of this and that, but Father, we just uh, ask us simply just to be your people in your presence here tonight, Father, to uh, to hear your word, Father, to hear you speaking to us, Father, we just ask you, Lord, that uh, uh, you would bless our service here tonight, Lord, bless each one that's come, Father, with uh, uh, just uh, simply being in your presence, God, we love you, we praise you, we ask these things in your Son, Christ Jesus' name, amen. As Jesus had came out uh, of, of Bethany that was there, he kind of came out of uh, uh, all that had happened with Mary and Martha and with Lazarus and the, uh, the things that was going on, the, uh, the, 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 no, no doubt his, uh, his fame to some, notoriety to others, it was growing, it was, uh, it was kind of building momentum uh, for Jesus to, to, uh, to come into the, um, you know, the... This is what the ministry had been had been building to to this point. Was this entry into Jerusalem? Been there before. Uh, not, not really going to uh, focus on those things. But this was coming to the closing uh, of his ministry, and uh, as Jesus would speak to them, uh, uh, coming through the the later verses, uh, not only here but through the other gospels, he Jesus knew his time was coming to an end. Uh, that those that was with him, they wasn't ready to receive those things yet. But nonetheless, there was a ton of people around that was ready to receive something. They had heard of this great man named Jesus. Uh, uh, you know, again, reading right through there, it said, who is this? You know, what is going on? Who is this person uh, that is in the street? Why are we having a parade today? What is going on? Whatever it is that they was asking, there was some that knew. They knew who Jesus was. They know what he had done. And others just simply may have known his name or knew that something had happened, you, you know, a, a, a town or two over a few blocks on down the street. But people were excited. People were excited at the fact that Jesus was coming to town, that Jesus was going to be in their midst, Jesus was going to be present with them, that Jesus was going to be there, and they were excited about it. People were thrilled to have Jesus coming by. And the great multitude, a very great multitude. Now, is that a great numerical description that we have right here in the book of Matthew? No, it doesn't tell us how many, but it says a very great multitude. Now, if you want to do a comparison of uh, uh, how words and things were phrased uh, in, in the books, in the gospels of that, uh, Jesus fell to, uh, fed the 5,000 men, not counting women and children, and it was just represented as a multitude. This is a very great multitude. I don't know how many people. I don't. You think of what is going on. Passover is coming. People's coming to do their thing. The Jews from all over the, the, the area there is going to be making their trip. No doubt there was, uh, uh, there was a large quantity of people. We can at least agree on that. And in the description that we find in Matthew, it was a very great multitude not only was they there but they paved the way it says they laid their garments in the street they would have took off their uh, uh the, the, their, their their jackets their cloak whatever it is that you would want to call it their uh, uh that they, they had took those off they had laid them down uh, others said they had climbed the trees they had cut palm leaves the branches they had laid things down excited that he was there for uh our purposes and what we can relate to this was the red carpet this was the red carpet being uh, uh, rolled out for the royalty that was coming and the words here that they are saying and the multitudes that went before and that followed there was those that led those that followed Jesus was in the midst read the words catch the phrases that was in there there was a very great multitude of people some had went before laid these things down others was coming uh, behind and there was a, a, a roaring of the people They that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, and blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The word that is there is a meaning of salvation from God, so they are expecting 
salvation. The people are expecting salvation. We've uh, preached this before. We've heard this taught. We've uh, uh, kind of been in this area many, many times before. But what they was looking for in the salvation from God was uh, um, the end of the Roman rule. They was looking for an immediate salvation. Now you can read about uh, how he came in, uh, uh, the, the way uh, he, he wrote in, what he wrote in on. You can read about all these things and you can uh, read about the symbolic nature of it and uh, uh, what it represents in kingdoms and areas of the time versus how he returns on a, a much different kind of uh, uh, animal in the, in the book of Revelation than it is here. But they all have meaning and we're not going to dwell upon that meaning here tonight. But what I want you to grasp is that there was a very great multitude that was tickled to death that Jesus was coming, that Jesus was going to be in the midst. And they were, when you get into Mark, you get into Luke, you get into John, you get about reading all the things that was there. Uh, we know that the, the sound would have been a, a, a roaring sound and a, uh, that they told Jesus, you need to tell these people to hold their peace. And Jesus says, well, no, because if all these people had held their peace, the rocks themselves would be crying out. There was a, it was a joyous occasion. that when he was coming to the city, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Jesus had asked that question many times in his ministry, who do people say that I am? When, when, when we're going around and the, uh, the, uh, everyone is buzzing about, about this, that, and the other, what, what are people saying? Who do they say that you are? And, uh, you know, and then uh, Jesus challenges back, well, who do you say that I am? And, uh, uh, again, that's a, a, a scripture topic for a, a, a different time and a different day. These people were interested in who Jesus is and who Jesus was. They wanted to know all that it was on top of the fact that Lazarus was in the midst and they also wanted to see him. They wanted to see the things that was going on. They wanted to hear of the miracles. They wanted to uh, just realize all that was happening and people was there for a, a mixed multitude of reasons, but nonetheless, they joined in the triumph with uh, uh, shouting. They, uh, they joined in the parade. They joined in, in all the occasion, but yet they would still sit there and say, hey, why are we doing this? There's a bunch of excitement in the street. Let's just go to here and be excited with them. We'll, we'll just echo everybody's sentiments. But, you know, at, at, at some point, you, 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 you can see people standing there that's about three rows deep into the crowd saying, what's the deal? How many conversations you went on as Jesus went down the streets? from the approach of the gate of the city to getting into the city on the way to the temple, how many conversations do you think was had when it said, who is this? Do you imagine some of those stories went, hey, would well, you remember the other day when we were sitting over at the barber shop? Do you remember when we was getting our haircut and I told you that just uh, uh, down the road there, Pinch, there's this guy that had died and he'd been dead for four days and he'd come back to life? That's him. The guy right there, no, that's not him, but that's the one who told him to come out of the cave. Others would have said, it's just some prophet feller out of Galilee. I don't really know much about him. He's, uh, he's supposed to be able to do some pretty cool stuff. Others would have been, no, that's not just a prophet out of Galilee. This is the Savior. This is Christ. This is God manifested in the flesh. This is, I've been around. I've heard his teaching. He is a marvelous teacher. He can great things. Are you sure that? No, 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 that's not him. That was this other fellow that was over here. This guy, can you imagine the conversations? And the mixed bag of emotions. People's wanting freedom from the Roman rule. Well, they hear Messiah and they hear Savior and they think, well, here we go. Our deliverance is here. Don't really know which one of these guys it is. I ain't even quite sure what his name is, but hallelujah, I'm glad he's here. Others are just kind of there. They've just joined in the fun. Others have an emotional attachment. 
Does it not sound like modern day Christianity to you? Some people know exactly who they're coming to church to see. Some people know exactly uh, what they're in for. Others just having an idea of what it is. And uh, uh, some really have no clue, but they're just there for the experience. And when we're all shouting and having a good time, other people is more willing to join in. But when they came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? Who is this? Hold on tight. Buckle your seatbelts because we're about to change gears and we're going to take a hard left right here, okay? Who is this? Who is this that is here? Who is this that has come? Jesus to all these very great multitudes, the no telling how many uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of people was there, it was nonetheless something that they all wanted a part of. They had heard of the miracles, they had heard of the greatness, they had heard of all these things, and just like uh, uh, us, as modern day, uh, whether we're believers or modern day non-believers, we have nonetheless heard of the great and the miraculous and the marvelous things that God has done in the lives of His children. Amen? If people's not heard that, then Christian, it's high time you start telling them about that, because they can't hear it unless we say it. They came, they saw, they wanted to see. And Jesus comes into the town and it says, and Jesus went into the temple. And that's where the, you, that's the place you would expect the Son of God to go, amen? That's what you would expect. That Hey, I wanted to be a part of Jesus. They, I, I've heard something about he's the son of God. He's a great teacher. Yeah, I expect him to go into the temple. I expect him to go in there. And it's probably going to be really cool when he gets in there. He's probably going to start teaching us about some stuff. Or, you know, maybe we have an opportunity to, uh, to be able to, uh, to witness or to receive some miracles. I, you know, hey, th th this being a part of Jesus is really cool. There's some great things going on around us. There's people smiling. There's people uh, shouting hallelujah. These great things happening all around. What do you think the mood of the people is right now where we are in the passage? Let's use a fancy word and let's say jubilant. They are excited. They're, I, I bet there is still a roaring uh, on the outside. And I bet you they kind of simmer down just a little bit as Jesus approaches the temple. And I bet as he gets into the temple, it's maybe a little bit quieter. They still just kind of the noise just from the uh, daily activities and things that would have been going on and the preparation of things they was getting prepared for. I'm spending a lot of time to set this up for you for a purpose. Because everybody was going about their daily activities and everybody was going on living their lives and doing uh, everything that they wanted to do. And uh, th there was Jesus that was there and they was close to him and they, uh, th they had met him, they had witnessed him. They was uh, uh, beginning to be a part of all the things that was uh, great that was happening and going on and they was tickled to death uh, for him to be there. And then Jesus went into the temple. Where's, right now, April 2nd, 2023, where's the temple? Right here. Everybody's, we're just so excited that Jesus is around. He's about to come into the temple. He is about to enter the temple. Here he comes. He's come down the street. People are shouting, Hallelujah! Praise God, Jesus is here. Woo! Right? It's kind of like being at revival. Everybody's excited. Everybody's, woo! Yeah! Jesus is here. So he gets in the temple. What do he do when he gets to the temple? 
When Jesus got home, what did he do? Now imagine there, there's all this noise and a jubilation that is outside, and Jesus walked into the temple. Man, I forgot Jackson was asleep. Emphasis on was. But Jesus got there, and he walks into the temple. And I don't imagine that this was a furious walk. I think Jesus was perfectly at home in God's house. And I kind of think it was a slow, more purposeful walk. Maybe kind of looking and eyeballing, sizing the place up. Seeing what's going on there in his house. Amen. This is, does it not say that this was God's house? You can read in the Old Testament. You can read tons of other places in Scripture and understand that that was God's house. You can read New Testament Scripture and you can understand that when Jesus comes into the modern temple being at us, that he is perfectly at home at our house. We are even referred to in ways as a house when Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and will open the door unto me and will allow me to come in, hey, I'm going to come in, I'm going to have fellowship with him, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be family. It's not word for word. Don't say the preacher can't quote scripture. I wasn't, I wasn't quoting, I'm paraphrasing for you. But that is even to show you that in the latter part of Revelation, Jesus is still referring to the temple of God as his house. So Jesus comes into his home. He comes into his place. He comes into a place that he's well aware of. Because even as he, he had given uh, all the instructions on building the temple and what, how things must be, you know, if, if Jesus Christ is the same today as he was yesterday and he's going to be forevermore, then do you not think this same Jesus being God manifested in the flesh knew the exact layout of the temple? Do you not think he knew exactly where everything was supposed to be? Friend, if God fashioned you and I together, if he formed us out of the, as Jameson says, he planted us and he made us out of the dirt, I mean, was we not fashioned from the dust and the dirt of the earth? And God breathed the breath of life into us. So friend, when he comes in to the modern temple, he knows exactly how it should be. He knows, uh, he, he knows what's where. But he came into the temple. And I believe there was a silence that grew over the place. And I believe when he walked up to the money changers and he said, get out. I believe there was almost a bit of confusion that was there. Get out. Hey. Hey. You, you're not supposed to be here. I need you to get out. It's time to go. There's no room for you here. This isn't supposed to be here. This doesn't need to be here. I need you to go. Now, you can read into, uh, the, I think it's going to be sometime, somewhere around John, maybe around chapter 5 of another time in which Jesus drove these people out. And it wasn't, a, uh, it wasn't just, hey, sir, if you don't mind, I need you to stand up, take your things, and leave. The Bible says there, uh, the word of God, the written word of God that is here, it says that he had, uh, he had took cords, he had braided them together, and he made his own whip, and he drove them out. It was no longer a, a, a portion of a, or a, a, a question of will you, it is you are going. Bro, get on, get on down the road, it's time for you to go. Jesus came home. Jesus came home into a very great multitude shouting and crying in excitement that he was there. And then he started cleaning house. And that same group that was saying, Hallelujah, he's home, in just a few short days was saying, Crucify. Give us the murderer. We don't want this guy. Be gone with him. It's funny how we change our tune, ain't it? 
still ain't a lot different than modern day Christianity. Here we are. Uh, the depiction of the events is going to take place, you know, the, uh, the, the, the week before Easter. Man, in just a few days of coming in contact with Christ, we can really change our tune, can't we? Because we're either still tickled to death that he's home, or we're mad that he turned our table over. Huh. Kind of funny how that works, ain't it? Man, I was, I, I, I was really excited to hear about this Jesus coming. I was tickled to death that Jesus was going to be here. And then, man, he turned my table over. Do you know how hard I'd work to get my table up here in this good spot where I was going to get good business? Do you know how hard, do you know how long it took me to perfect the art of selling doves? Of taking advantage of people that had to drive a long way? You know how long I've been accustomed to living in this sin? Do you know how much I enjoy living in this, this little aspect of my sin right over here? And then who is this Jesus that comes in and just drives it out? Well, let's back up a few verses and let's answer the question, who is this? Who is this? Who is this that everybody's shouting about coming down the street? And he's a, he's a cool enough feather that we, we laid our garments down and we cut palm branches down and we were shouting Hosanna unto, uh, unto God. Or, uh, praise God, he's here. Our, our deliverance, our salvation is here. Thank you, Lord. You have sent everything unto us that we desire. But now wait. Wait. We thought he was coming to deliver us. We didn't know he was coming to turn over our table. Who is this? Who is this? Well, Christian, you have to answer that yourself. Is this some guy that you heard of that you decided to follow not really knowing a whole lot about? Is this some guy that you heard of that a few towns over done a great thing and you thought, you know what, I, that sounds cool, I'll follow that. Is this just some, you know, good feeling thing you've just decided to be a part of? Or is this God? Is this the Lord? Is this the owner of that house who come in to put things back in order the way he desired it to be? Well, who is it? Now, let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another, even more tricky, challenging question. In this, in this picture of what we're reading, and I hope you, I hope you visualize what you're reading. It's much easier to, to understand. You picture this multitude of people lining the street, and I don't know what the street looked like then, so don't ask me that. Never been to the temple. I've seen pictures and drawings, so I can't give you a great visualization of that. But just imagine, if you will, people's lined up in our road. All over dog walk, all over the area. And Jesus has walked in the back doors of Oakdale. Are you following? Or are you sitting back there in the back charging admission? Where are you in the picture? Are you the money changer? Are you on the outside? Or are you just new to this whole operation? Are you sitting here trying to think, what in the world is going on? Where do you fall? Church, where do you fall in the picture? Who are you? Who are you? It's one thing when we can ask, well, who is this? But I'm asking, who are you? You a child of God? Is this dad walked into your bedroom to see if you've actually cleaned it? Well, the outside of it looks real neat, don't it? Hey, boys, Chase, Jed, I'm talking youngs at this moment. Boy, the floor in the area around through there, it looks real good, don't it? Oh, Daddy, don't, don't look under the bed. Oh, Daddy, don't look under the bed. 
15 juice pouches, about 37 water bottles, enough enough wrappers of food that you could take back to Little Debbie and stock them for another month on production. But man, let me tell you what you could really see in there. It would look nice. Is that your house, church? Is that you? When Jesus comes home and he walks in, it's just, you know, the areas, does it look nice? What if he puts on a white glove and gives it that number? Is it clean? The money changer's still sitting there? You still charging admission? You still trying to profit off other people's service to God? Change roles with me real quick. You got the people in the city saying, who is this? Now, flip roles real quick. It's Jesus asking, who are you? Who are you? Is this my house or is this your house? Who lives here? Who's the owner of this place? Is it mine or is it yours? If it's mine, how many of you as parents have ever said, well, as long as you live under my roof, you're going to do it this way? You ever said that? If you have kids, go ahead and raise your hand. Cameron and Chris, go ahead and raise your hand because you will say that at some point. You will. It's like at some point, in par- you, you're not officially a parent until you have said that. If you're going to live under my roof, you're going to do the... Tristan, you still live at home? Yeah. You ever heard that? Well, as long as you live here, you're going to do it this way. I don't care if you're 42 years old. You're thinking, I hope to God he moves out before he's 42 years old. It's amazing. Who are you in the story? It makes a big difference, don't it? So again, God's saying, whose house is this? Let me check the deed. Yep, Lamb's written right here, Lamb's Book of Life. I paid for it. Yep, it's my house. It's my house. I think you'll be living by my rules. Amen. It's my house. I've said that. I've said it to Mindy. I've said it to Jaylee. I've said it to Jace. I've said it to Jet. I've said it to Jameson. But man, he just... Maybe my house, but it's his world and we're just living in it. It's not really a matter of who is this and who is that. It's really more about whose house is it. When Jesus walks in, is he going to like what he sees? Are you following along in the crowd? Are you laying your stuff down? Or are you going to deny him here in a few days when stuff gets real tough? Just a few days from now when the the, the 12 that are there and they're, oh, you know, Peter, oh, I'm never going to deny you. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Whose house is this? Whose house? Jesus says unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Jet wanted to stay out, or Jameson wants to stay outside and play cops and robbers. It's kind of fitting for tonight. Let me ask you this, church. It's your house. Sort of. Whose rules you living by? Whose rules you living by? Where in the story do you fit in? You know, we could say it, we could preach it this way, we could preach it that way, but it's unique because we're all in different parts of life. We're all in different circumstances. We all have different things going on. Let me tell you something, child of God, you're still God's. And he still owns the house. 